Mark Kay. It is at 5.07 p.m. I'll call the uh, meeting of the Board of Civil Authority to order. The uh, one item on the agenda today is to discuss the proposal for uh, reapportionment for the Montpelier uh, House District. Um, I assume everybody's satisfied with the with the agenda. Okay. Um, to get our uh, to frame the debate or the, the discussion, I put together a very brief uh, presentation on uh, on PowerPoint, and John has just started sharing it to talk about the. Uh, what the law and history are of, uh, of this topic. Uh, next slide, please. Are you all seeing this okay? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Okay. Traditionally in Vermont, from 1777 all the way to 1962, the House of Representatives was on a one town, one vote basis. So every town from the biggest to the tiniest had, had the same power in the House of Representatives. In 1964, the U.S. Supreme Court decided Reynolds versus Sims, and the Vermont Supreme Court decided Buckley versus Hoff. And in both of those decisions, the Supreme Court found that uh, the Constitution required representation to be proportional to the population. And so the first reapportionment under that system was adopted in 1965. Next slide, please. And the law that we're applying is found in Title 17, Chapters 34 and 34A. And the purpose is established by 17 VSA 1901 is that uh, we're required to Establish legislative bodies in such a manner as to obtain, achieve substantially equal weighting of the votes of all voters in the choice of legislators. And apportionment stands for the House of Represent Representatives, the total population in the state divided by the number of members of the House of Representatives, so 150. And the statute sets forth the standards as preserving existing political subdivision lines insofar as practicable, recognizing and maintaining patterns of geography, social interaction, trade, political ties, and common interests, and the use of compact and contiguous territory. The definition of a, of a representative district is a district from which one or two representatives are elected. There is no preference in the uh, statutes for either a one member district or a two member district. They stand on equal footing under the statutes. And we can, this is just the provision requirement that the Apportionment board issues a tentative proposal. It goes before the boards of civil authority, and we can take a position as to whether we approve it or do not approve it. Next slide. From what we could tell, uh, as of 1967, Montpelier actually had three single member districts, although one of those districts apparently had part of uh, part of Berlin. And it was that way right up until 1982. And since 1982, the uh, apportionment there, Montpelier has compri been comprised, composed of two, of one two member district. And there's been a little cutting around the edges for population balance sake. So there's been times where there's been 
a little bit of Montpelier out of the district or a little bit, bit of uh, surrounding towns in the district. But uh, we're now just the city of Montpelier uh, for the entire two member district. And what we have here is the map, which you've probably all seen uh, of the two proposed uh, districts. I'll just mention the, the video is going to be a little blurry, even if I zoom in to see that. So I would refer folks to, if you can get to it, to the clerk's portion of the city web page. You just go to the city web page and under departments, go to city clerk. You'll see links right there on that front page to get a better look at them, because this is uh, it's looking pretty blurry, and I don't think it's just because I don't have my glasses. Yeah, I going online, I found it to be very hard to read, too. But uh, but there we have it. The uh, the legislative apportionment board this time decided that they would make uh, all the house districts to be single member districts, and uh, doing it to Montpelier the same as they've done to to all the other single member districts or, or multi member districts down to one member district. And if this carries forward, this would be, Montpelier would be Washington 7-4, or 7-1, and Washington 7, is that a 2? It should be a 2. It is. Yeah, okay, good, I couldn't see it. And I think that's it. I think we're open for, uh, for debate on the, on the proposal. Our options tonight are to uh, tell the apportionment board that we agree with their proposal or we do not agree with their proposal. Do we have to give rationale or is it just yes or no? I think it's whatever you want it to be. Jack, the board doesn't need to follow our recommendation. No, that's, that's right. They don't need to follow our recommendation and it's ultimately decided by the legislature, not by the board. Okay. So what is the point of doing this as far as the legislature is concerned? Do you want to answer that? <laughs> I, I know that because the legislature is going to be interested in what the, uh, what the towns have to say. I've been told by one of our local legislators that it's a Republican proposal. Um, I had a conversation with uh, with Tom Little, who uh, who chaired the uh, the effort, and it seems as though the uh, there was a split. It's there is just a one vote difference between uh, you know for for and against, yeah. and I don't think it was all Republicans, all okay. Dems, or all Progs. Okay, thank you. Um, Hi, folks. This is Mary Hooper. Um, just as a reminder, the Legislative Apportionment Board is created by statute and it calls for the what, what, so the governor appoints some positions and the legislature appoints some positions. And um, what well, there's seven members. And I, I, I haven't studied this, but it is. Um, several parties interests are represented on the board is probably the best way to say it. And so I, I think it would be hard to say it is a Republican or a Democratic proposal. It is a mix of opinions is the way I've understood it. Yeah. Heck, I believe the state Supreme Court has a review of this as well. Okay. I, I don't know that. Ron has his hand. Rob? Ron. Ron. Okay, Ron. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for helping me figure out <laughs> who's trying to be recognized. Uh, a, a couple of things, I guess. The um, To Paige's second point uh, is that the vote was four to three. So this plan is not something that's being overwhelmingly supported by the 
the reapportionment board. It's a recommendation for our consideration, but uh, if you want to give any weight to the message coming out of the board, as, as Mary said, it's divided. My question is, is there any benefit to either the city or the state for Montpelier to have two distinct voting districts, one member districts? Anybody? That's a valid question. I, I, I'm, I'm, does anyone have a re response or is anyone up next? Rob, it looks like you're up next. Yeah, so I'm going to take on the position to kind of answer Ron's question because I believe having two districts is actually is much more representative to the neighborhoods. Um, and I feel myself just kind of like our city council, how like we have a couple of members in different points. And even like I was talking last week about some other issue regarding to our city council and somebody's like, oh, I got to talk to my city council member on this. Like, I'm like, who's your city council? And they referred to who it was. I'm, I'm trying not to get this into a political debate. Um, so I think it's much more representative by us having split districts, um, just like we do of our city council. Uh, otherwise, if we wanted to go that, we should have at large for the whole, for the city council. Um, so that's my take on that. I'm not sure everybody else's view, but that's how I see it, answering your question, Ron. So I, I kept coming back to, um, you know, I know this, I, this isn't apples and oranges, but it isn't quite apples and apples. But I thought about the sense that we're all in both a one member and a two member district in terms of, you know, we have Peter Welch representing us as an at large representative, and then we have our two senators. Do I feel inherently less represented? Or is there any way that I can point at that I'm less represented by uh, Bernie and by Leahy than I am by Peter Welch. And I'm just not coming up with anything. Um, you know, I, I'm sort of grateful to have both of our senators there and don't like the idea that I have to pick just one, but that notwithstanding, I'm not sure that I would see with a direct comparison why one is more democratic than the other. Kim, Kim, did you want to be recognized, or you? You well, say your hand up and then down. I can't tell when my hand is up when it's down, but. But it was up, and so I'm calling on you if you want to talk. Okay. Um, I think against the national backdrop of uh, gerrymandering that's going on, it's a serious threat to our democratic processes and i i i'm really disturbed about what's happening at the national level and i think the state level having single member districts is inherently more um representative it uh and i think it more fits the the general purpose of of uh, apportionment is to give everybody every voter an equal say in what's going on um so i would support having two single member districts and i thought that the carnahan's letter which hasn't been mentioned um, is very persuasive to me. Um, Maggie, then Paige. I mean, I guess Kim sort of answered. My question was really just not to put anyone on the spot, but I was hoping to hear somebody who supports this proposal um, lay out the reasons why they support it. And I'm curious what letter Kim is referring to and if that's a letter that we can all read. Maybe I missed it if it was sent to us. Yeah, he sent it. John sent it to all of us. I missed oh, it. Oh, really? I missed it too. He sent it to all of us. I expect John could read it. Right. Uh, I could pull it up. It's from the Carnahan's. 
Pull it up on my phone would be probably easier. Just okay, yeah. <laughs> but uh, if, if you're if you're pulling it up, that would probably be, be better. Um, I can read it. It might make more sense to sum it up. Um, but I do have it. Um, it ain't exactly short, but I'll go ahead and read it. Yeah, go for it. Um, dear Montpelier Board of Civil Authority. We urge you to support the Legislative Apportionment Board's proposal to create 150 single-member house districts in Vermont, including two single-member districts in Montpelier, for the simple reason that this is the fairest approach to representative democracy possible. Multi-member districts have historically been used to suppress minority representation in the country. How? By diluting the power of minorities by combining them with more powerful groups in larger legislative districts. The influence of a group that might have enough strength in a smaller geographic area to elect a representative is reduced if the area is expanded to include another group with more power. Instead of electing one member from each group in two single member districts, the community gets two representatives from the more powerful group. This technique has been used to disenfranchise blacks in the South, but can be used in many other situations and with other types of minorities as well. Multi-member districts also tend to discourage candidates by younger, less well-known leaders. Because a multi-member district is larger than a single-member district, it takes more resources, time, money, community prominence, etc., to be elected from a multi-member district. It is harder to challenge incumbents of powerful groups in larger districts. It is often argued that multi-member districts are better for individual voters because they give, multiple, they give voters multiple voices in the legislature. This may be true, but it is not democratic. Why should an individual voter in Montpelier get two voices in the House while other voters get only one? If two voices are good, are three better? Four. If Montpelier insists on having two voices, what is to stop larger communities from insisting on even more? Vermont may be relatively homogeneous, uh, but it is important to give potential minorities of all types an opportunity to achieve representation in Montpelier. The Legislative Apportionment Board got it right when they proposed a full complement of single-member districts. We note that the U.S. House districts are all single-member districts. With democracy in this country being attacked, it is important for Vermont to stand on the side of our democratic values. There is no reason for Montpelier to oppose the principle of single-member districts for our city. Sincerely, Paul, and, Paul Carnahan and Eve Jacobs Carnahan. Now, Paige, did, and you were just going to summarize it. You didn't have... That was okay. Great. And, and Paige, did you want to be up next? Well, I was thinking that with the single member districts and given, I'm actually disturbed by the fact that political affiliation and social contacts are included as part of the definition of how you create a district. That seems like an invitation to gerrymandering. And I feel like if we divide it, if we divide it up, then it gives people, and I guess the people maybe is us, so maybe it's not relevant, but it gives the legislature an opportunity to, to move the district lines around in ways that um, um, define one district as one way and another district as another way um, um, that would separate people rather than I can see arguments on both sides, but I, I guess I'm feeling like that gives, to divide it up into two single member districts gives further opportunity for future gerrymandering to sway the vote one way or the other. Okay, uh, Carrie? Um, I think Ron was actually ahead of me. Oh, okay, sorry, Ron, go ahead. Uh, I wanted to echo what Paige is saying and Paul Carnahan in his letter, he cites the single member house districts, but I think we're well aware of the weird configurations that take place in these house districts. I lived in Austin, Texas for a number of years and they created the legislature there created a voting district of a narrow slice of Austin that stretched all the way to the Rio Grande border. So it, it bore no meaningful political configuration or any of the any of the attributes that the Vermont legislation calls for. I think 
once we go down the path of slicing and dicing, and this could be particularly true on the county level, if that's what happens, uh, I personally feel we open the door for gerrymandering, not protecting ourselves from it. Um, Carrie, and then Rob, and then Paige. Carrie. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of going on the, the same theme as the, the previous couple of people. I'm, I've been doing a ton of reading and research about this, and I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not totally sure what I think we should do. But um, I kind of approach this from the perspective of we really need to think about what's best for Montpelier and what, what works well here, what might work, might not work. And um, the, the arguments about equity are very compelling to me. Um, historical use of multi-member districts to, to shut people out is, is really, um, you know, obviously very compelling, but I think we need to, we need to look at what might be, does this plan do that? And I don't, I don't think it does. Um, and, and, but then we also, if we're going to look at, you know, kind of historically what's good for equity, um, multi-member districts, women do better in multi-member districts nationally than they do in single member districts. And so, um, but I don't say that to argue for <laughs> the multi-member districts uh, because I, I still feel like we really need to look at, well, what's going on in Montpelier? And are there people who are currently being excluded in the current structure that we have? Um, the, the idea that uh, Placing that, or you know, um, dividing Montpelier in some way, I think is always very tricky and risky. And um, it, I, the three districts that we have for city council, I don't actually think they very well represent neighborhoods. Um, I'm part of District Three, and in, in this little bit, you know, in downtown, and the rest of the district is across the river. It's it's not the same neighborhood at all. Um, and I look at the proposed separation that this plan suggests, and I don't think it aligns with the way people actually live and the way communities actually work in Montpelier. And, and so I think it's important for us to be, um, to take seriously the part about the statutory requirement that reapportionment looks at existing, not just political divisions, but also things like trade and community and et cetera, et cetera. And, and then for us to think about how do we want to actually be represented in the legislature and is what we have working well for this particular community in other communities that might or might not work well, but I think that's really the question before us. I think uh, Rob and yeah, uh, oh. Rob, why don't you go first? Okay. I, yeah, th thanks, Carrie, for your your uh, take there. Um, I was I was going to ask about the question about the districts, the way the the board is actually proposed, and I I'm looking at the, the division as being a fair assessment. I don't see this as being any particular gerrymandering going on, and I think it kind of does the best we can possibly do for representative democracy the way it's divided. Uh, is it perfect? I don't think it's perfect, uh, the, the division lines, but I am accepting of the way the, the lines are drawn up to the best the, in order to reach that fair uh, representation. So A, is that the question? Do we want to do this for this particular proposal or B, uh, for future? Uh, I'm happy with the way it is, um, the way they're proposing it. Page. Donna and Ann, I think. I just had a, a oh. question. And that is how many people are there supposed to be in each district? I know there were some numbers on the on the pictures, the, the pictures of the different um, divisions, but I don't remember what they were. I believe ideally it's roughly 4,200, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And that's yeah. dividing the total um population of vermont or the uh voting population total population total population okay by the number of uh positions okay thank you yep johanna yes i um unfortunately missed the uh presentation of the maps 
Um, so I, I hear that at least for Rob, he's happy with the, with the proposed division in Montpelier. Um, I'm wondering what happens if we did have these two districts and uh, say for one district, nobody ran. I, I didn't hear the last thing you said. What do we do if, if we have two districts and in one district, nobody runs? Nobody won? runs. Run. Nobody runs. Could be a write in. Yeah. yeah. I suppose that could happen. Or, or the governor would end up appointing. There'd be that. There would be that would create a vacancy. Yeah. Hard to picture that happening, but it, I suppose it could. Um. So I'd like to hear what other people think about the division that's proposed. Mm -hmm. uh, Donna, I think you're up next, and then Anne. Actually, Anne was ahead of me. So go okay, ahead, Anne. Thank you. Uh, well, so I just want to express that um, I am in support of the two uh, single member districts. I think that makes sense for the equity reasons. And sort of like what Carrie was saying earlier, I think the question is, for me, is, is this the right division? And uh, so and it's interesting uh, to hear you say, Carrie, that, you know, does this reflect how our neighborhoods work? And that uh, does, I, I agree that it, this, the way this is divided, I'm not sure it makes sense. Uh, I'm curious. Um, so if I were going to divide Montpelier into two roughly equal maps, uh, according to population, would this be it? And I'm not sure that it would be, but I also like, redrawing that line is not something I'm prepared to do um, right now. And that, I don't know, like, uh, I'm, I'm also of the opinion that like, you know, if, if you don't like something, you better come with a, a separate different proposal. And I, I don't have that. Um, and to be fair, on principle, do I like two districts? Yes. Uh, would this be fine? Sure. Do I think it's gerrymandered? No. Um, the only part that seems odd to me is that route two is uh, got this funny little slice um, that is, you know, taken out of one, added to the other. It doesn't make much sense to me. Don't know. I, like, I, I kind of wonder, like, how much conversation went into, like, these specific things. And I, Mary, I wonder if you know that. Um, okay. Um, so that, I guess that's that's all I have to say at the moment. And I... I think to uh, get into details about the exact alignment of these lines would be the yeah. like weeds that I don't think we really yeah. can afford or want to go into now. Okay, thanks. Uh, I put myself in the queue, but Donna, you're up. Um, I, I'm glad to have this discussion. I, I came in thinking I preferred the current two district and and everything I've heard I'm still preferring the two district and part of that is is what I've read is that when you go to the one district it'll definitely need more moving more manipulating one district now is 41,000 and the other is 39,000 and so you get these shuttle shifts I think you get what I've read you get more shifts when you go to the one person membership so it would be changing and maybe that's good maybe it's not but i i like the more holistic approach of the whole city being in a two-member district and we can work because the inequalities to me aren't between for montpelier we're not a huge city so i think the inequality comes that we need to put things out there to help people run because we have school board people who run for the whole city it's only the city council that has districts. And so I think we can do much to help more equality of candidates and issues than just to divide the city in half. So that's my two cents worth. And I, I agree with much that's already been said about the two district uh, situation. Thanks. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make a couple of comments. I, uh, I don't support this proposal. I do support the uh, 
the full, the, the split or uh, the two member district the way it is now. Um, and I have a couple of observations about that. One, it is true that there have been times in, in various parts of the country where at large districts have been created as a means of, uh, of disenfranchising minority groups. It's, I don't think there's any evidence that that's playing any role in the, uh, in the definition of, uh, of Montpelier's district. Um, people have suggested, well, um, it makes sense for the neighbors, <coughs> neighborhoods or parts of neighborhoods to have different representation. I, I agree that that's true at the level of the city council because we are acting at a very granular level for what uh, city policies and how they might affect different parts of the city. At the, legis at the level of the uh, state legislature in the House of Representatives, <clears throat> the uh, legislature is not acting in a way that's going to affect different neighborhoods of the city uh, in different ways. And so I don't think it makes sense to say, well, we need to split the city up in, uh, in order to have a represent representative uh, delegation in the legislature. Um, I don't think that it's reasonable to say, well, <clears throat> we're getting, by having a two member district, Montpelier is getting an, a disproportionate representation in the legislature because each, each person, you can say, well, everyone in Montpelier has two House members who are representing them, but really each of us only has half of a vote for each of those House members because there are two of them. And, uh, and so we do not have e either way, either a single member district or a two member district gives each individual uh, an equal say in uh, what's happening in the, in the state legislature. Um, I do not think, and we had this discussion 10 years ago too, and, and one of the questions that came up was, well, do we have such different uh, differently composed uh, populations in the in the city that the interests of one proposed district or one area of the city are so different from the interests of another area of the city that it makes sense to split those into two separate representative districts and, and I really don't see it. I think what we have is a, really a quite homogeneous uh, population and the particular, I would guess that the, where the line was drawn was mostly not to, uh, to track the, uh, the goals set forth in the, in the statutes existing uh, in, and those are again, patterns of geography, social interaction, trade, political ties and common interests. But I, I would guess that the, uh, the biggest criterion for where the line would be is to make the, make the sizes of the districts come out so they're as close to the ideal uh, population as possible. So I really do not think that this is uh, a proposal that we should adopt. Um, so. Jack, do you think we should call yeah. a vote on this now? Um, I wasn't planning on speaking to this for, for fear that, that it seemed um, self-interested. And 
let's, but let me offer a couple of observations. Uh, I'm thinking about the times when I've worked the voting tables here for elections in the city and people pause and look at the map and debate, they come to the wrong table um, because people don't know where their districts are. And, and that's fine and we're always very kind and, and make sure that they get to the right place. But what concerns me about that is the degree of embarrassment that comes with that. People feel like they ought to know that, know where they, you know, which district they're in. And I worry that people are less engaged if they don't know which dis district they're in. I, I, I can remember who my counselors are and I know who to pick up the phone and call or how to write to somebody. But a lot of folks don't know that. And I am worried that it, it's easy to remember in a two member district who my two reps are. Um, under this proposal, I have to remember what the dividing line is. It's not Montpelier. It's some line that doesn't really make sense logically. It doesn't tie to our voting district. It's not a logical, as we've discussed, we don't really see the logic there. So I don't know who my rep is necessarily. So I may not be as willing to get in touch with that person or I'm embarrassed or I'm confused and that's not good. We want folks to be able to, to know who we are. I mean, that's one of the beauties of having such small districts. It's so personal. You know who to get in touch with. It's, it, it, it's straightforward. So I worry about that. Um, uh, as a state representative, uh, perhaps I shouldn't admit to this, but I pay attention when people write to me. And people write to me from all over Vermont saying, please do this, please pay attention to that. I'm interested in, I want you to do this. I'm amused by how many people tell me that, that, that they're my constituent, but they live in Washington County or they live even outside of Washington County, but they're my constituent. But in fact, if you live in Montpelier, I pay double attention. And if I have to triage who I can respond to of the hundreds of emails that I get on a weekly basis. It's a Montpelier resident that I pay attention to. And in a way, uh, so I, I'm um, maybe undermining the equal representation <laughs> argument, but I'm saying, and I think one of what we need to do is to think about what is best for Montpelier. I'm saying that you have almost double power because of that. And if we're interested in what is best for Montpelier, I think that's a good argument. You know, you, you have a stronger voice in the city of Montpelier. I, the, the, the argument for equal representation across the state is, is very wise and important. But let's also pay attention to how do we make sure that Montpelier is as strong as possible in the legislature to accomplish goals that support our residents. So I just wanted to offer those two observations about how people interact with us and, and how important that interaction is and that we make it as simple and straightforward and understandable as possible. And to me that uh, says, I, I believe the two member district works very well in that way. Um, so I support, I do not support this map. I do support the continuation of having a two member district. Rob. Yes, uh, first, first of all, I wanna comment about Jack. I agree with you about your, your statements about, you know, for a pretty, uh, we're not that diversified in opinions in the different neighborhoods. So it's not like we're dividing up our, our opinions and, and gerrymandering anything. Um, and I appreciate Mary Hooper's uh, take on everything because she actually is one of the most responsive legislators I know of. Um, and I feel the closer we get to smaller districts, the, if we have like each, each person is represented has one uh, 4,000 seat district, give or take some, 
is it closer people have a connection to their district and Mary is a much more open and connects with people. And, but I hear from other people in other state uh, and other districts that are like, oh, my representative is this, and we're going to have a meeting with our community with them. And I feel like in some other districts, it doesn't work. We need to have one person and equal representation that 4,000, I think is the, the key that we need to have. Um, and it, it, like, but I said, like before, it's not a perfect division line. There's no way we're ever going to get it. Even we can compare it to the two districts. It's not perfect because where numbers are not, if we total them together is we're under the median line. So, but thank you. Um, thanks. Uh, Carrie, uh, your hands down. Did you decide not to? Yeah, no, this time? I'm, I'm okay. fine. Thanks. Okay. John. So can uh, we call I'm, the vote now? Jack? I, well, we have a speaker. Um, I would just, I mean, just, just to be clear, I don't think we're in a position, and just, just to Rob's concern, I don't think we have to vote whether all single member dis the whole idea should be taken up or dropped. I mean, if there are issues in other towns, I think, you know, I think the legislature is capable of looking at them individually. I think we're really just talking about Montpelier, or at least we should be. Right. I think it would probably be a little out of line for us to, to make a, you know, have the, the Montpelier BCA make a, you know, pat overreaching, you know, statement about how it should be or shouldn't be. I think it's just about us. That's beyond our pay grade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to make sure everybody um, who's here has uh, a chance to say anything they, they want to say. I, I do sense that the, we're getting toward the uh, toward the conclusion of the discussion, but I do want to make sure that no one goes away uh, wishing they'd had a chance to speak. Johanna, I see your name, your hand up. Yes, I just want to say I really like both of our representatives so much. They are both really. Um, responsive and uh, responsible and you know really um, representing us well and it would feel much better if if um, if one of them decided well um, I'm not going to run again anyway so that we didn't have to make some kind of decision between two people that we feel well represented by because we're going to split into two districts and we've got two people in one district is that true? Yes. Yep. Yes, I thought so. Um, gosh, I, I don't like that situation at all. I just want to say that. Mm -hmm. I am not seeing any other hands. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we call the vote. I'll second that. Uh, there's no vote to call. Oh, um, I, thought, I, I can make a motion. I thought well, we had to decide. Um, well, we do, but there has to be a motion on the table. And I can move, I'll go ahead and move that the Montpelier Board of Civil Authority recommend the legislature reject the reapportionment board's proposal oh. to split the current two person district in Montpelier into two single member districts. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Um, because this is a Zoom meeting, we uh, we call the roll. Right. So, so I will call the roll. Uh, Michael Badamo. No. Jennifer. So just to be clear, no means that you want the two member district. No, um, no, no. no the, the opposite. Yeah. The, the yeah. proposal is to keep the two member district. So I'm sorry, no means you want to two one member districts. You yes. want two districts by voting no. Yes. Yeah. Right. And voting yes keeps them the same. Yes. Okay. So uh, Jennifer. Oh, are you still with us? Me? Yes, I'm still here. No, Jennifer. 
Hi. Jennifer Morton. I guess no. we don't have, I guess we've No, I'm it. here. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, how do you vote? Uh, yes. I'm confused now. Okay. The proposal <laughs> is to reject the split and to keep it the way it is. Got you. And the split is that weird line that goes right through my neighborhood. <laughs> right. uh, come back to me. Okay. Kim. Um, no. Okay. Carrie. Yes. Ron. Yes. Val. No. Jude. No. Sorry? No. No. Maggie. Yes. Paige. Yes. Rob. No. Is Connor still here? Yes, he's yep. here. Yep. And yes. Ann. No. Jack. Why don't you come back oh, to me because okay. I may oh, right. may not get the vote. To, right. I was supposed to come back to Jennifer anyways. Jennifer. Right. Well, I'm Go, gonna, oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'll vote yes. And what is your vote? No. No. Well, you haven't called on everybody. No. Oh, Donna. Jeez. And Catherine. Catherine. Oh, why? Why aren't you on my list? Oh, well, Donna. <laughs> yes. Catherine. Yes. All right. So now I got to count this up. Is that everybody? Did I miss anyone? That I haven't voted yet, but make sure make sure everyone else has voted. Okay. All right. It's a lot of people we got. All right. Has everyone on the board of civil authority voted? Yes. Okay. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. I have eight to seven. Yes. Six, seven, seven. Eight to seven. Yes. So uh, whew, by one vote, the motion passes. So in that case, the chair is not voting. Wow, that is a tight division. Well, interesting. The okay. chair can vote besides a tie. Yeah, you can vote. Sorry, what, what, Donna? The chair can vote without it being a tie. I agree. I vote yes. Then, <laughs> thank, thank you for that reminder. Oh. Um. Well, do you think, I mean, I feel just, I, if I may, um, it's such a close division. It does seem a little unfair to have such a uniform statement. I wonder if there's any way to essentially pass a minority report or. Well, I mean, the I motion know. the motion wasn't anything but to, to oppose the uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. So there's not a rationale given. I think that's, it reflects the close division of this board and of course of in fact of the apportionment board right yeah, the, the vote itself speaks yeah. to mm -hmm. that's true yeah okay there being no further business before the board we can be with a, rob are you raising your hand yeah, I, I was just saying I'm confident in uh, Representative Mary Hooper representing this board on any debate on the legislative legislative process, even without a minority report. Yeah, uh, I, you know, so I don't think we need to do that. Okay, thanks. Um, without objection, we'll uh, adjourn at 5:56 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.